So, well, so what is the way forward here? I mean, so you've said, you know, zero COVID policy doesn't make sense, you know, for a whole variety of reasons. Um, the lockdown policy is a fail, and actually it might be worth kind of recounting exactly how and why. Um, and then, you know, there's this whole, I don't know if we would call it like idea of vaccine mandates that's being floated in various ways and actually being instituted in some places like say New York City where I live. And so the question is, you know, given, why don't we just kind of explore these realities and then, you know, yeah. chart a way forward here. I mean, I think we have a fantastic tool to protect the vulnerable, the vaccines. We, we, we should work very hard to convince vulnerable people that it's, that it's worthwhile for them to get it. Uh, and that involves, for instance, not doing a mandate. A mandate, essentially, what's, what it's done is created a class of people. Like the, the vaccine, the anti-vax movement used to be a small fringe movement on the edge of society. And you know, scientists would obsess over it, or that you know, how, how can there exist X percent of some, the less than you know some one percent of people that don't agree that an MMR vaccine is a good idea. What the vaccine mandates have done, what this entire policy environment has done, uh, including like the denial of natural immunity, for instance, uh, immunity that for, uh, that's provided by recovery for after COVID, um, is it's created deep distrust over this vaccine. And now that, that this, this anti-vax movement, if you will, is, you know, 20, 20% 20 of the population, 30%, I mean, it's some, some much larger fraction. It's mainstreamed it. It's because people have lost trust in the science. Scientists have made all kinds of promises uh, about the lockdowns, about the vaccines that have not come to pass, right? So for instance, the promise was that the vaccines will get us to a, 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 to, to a place where we can more or less not worry about the, the, the spread of the disease. Well, of course, that, that turned out not to be true. Like the vaccine does not stop the disease from spreading. You have a highly vaccinated population and still have the disease spread. That's clear now, right? The, the promise was that the lockdowns would, would protect the vulnerable. Well, that's, that, that's turned out to be false. And then the idea was like the reason for the vaccine mandate is there's, there's not enough people cooperating with us to get vaccinated together. If, if we have sufficiently large fraction of the population vaccinated, we would, we would stop the thing. So now that we've created this uh, essentially an outclass of people, these unvaccinated people, for, we can blame for all kinds of things. Remove them from, from normal life. Uh, you know, a lot of them are poor. A lot of them are, are minorities. A lot of them are working class people who worked through the epidemic. They were the heroes of the epidemic up until the moment they decided, you know, I've already got COVID. I don't know if I, the vaccine is for me. I, I mean, you know, you can, you, can, you can argue about whether it was, is, is right or wrong from a medical point of view for them. Um, but instead of respecting them, they said, okay, you must get it or you lose your job. That's essentially where we are. Uh, uh, so I think uh, we've created this like deep distrust in science and in medicine through these like coercive policies and these set of failed promises. Um, and I think what needs to happen is we need to work to heal that. I mean, public health is actually quite an important thing and having a public health that people can trust is actually important for people's health. Uh, and I think um, the, uh, we just, we have to reverse course. I mean, I frankly, if I were in charge of the CDC, I would just apologize for the enormous mistakes that public health has made over the last, uh, the last 18 months. Uh, and, and, and seek to start anew, seek to, seek to get trust of the public. Uh, and um, I, I, th I think that's, that has to be the beginning of it, like some acknowledgement that, that things have gone deeply wrong, rather than trying to scapegoat, to take responsibility that the orthodoxy that, that promoted these lockdowns, um, that oversold the vaccines, instead of using them for focused protection, promising essentially zero COVID with them, they should acknowledge them, uh, that, that acknowledge that, that, that immunity after, uh, after infection actually exists acknowledge their errors and then start over, try to start over. So, and just, okay, for the record, um, with respect to lockdown policies, you're, you, you said they've unequivocally failed. It's abundantly clear. Explain that. Well, I mean, I'd like, uh, take the, the nat nations and state, I'll just give you a very, very simple example, right? So Florida has, has essentially opened up entirely in September of 2020, mostly opened up, uh, mostly opened up in May of 2020 have not followed a lockdown policy, didn't close businesses, didn't close, uh, didn't, didn't close schools. Uh, many places in Florida didn't mandate masks. Uh, so in, in, in schools in Florida actually didn't, didn't require like half the schools in Florida, more than half the schools in Florida didn't require masks during the year. Uh, 
and uh, or, or allowed parents to opt out or whatever, right? Uh, so what you had is uh, a, a essentially like an A-B test. You have Florida, which followed a much more, well, at the same time, they also fo followed a focused protection plan, protecting nursing homes uh, in, before the vaccine, moving resources into nursing homes to test staff, re reducing staff rotations, uh, working to provide uh, resources so that the older people that live in Florida could avoid being infected during high seasons of COVID. On the other hand, you have New York and, and New Jersey, Pennsylvania, California, that followed lockdown policies. Well, which had better COVID outcomes? Well, it turns out Florida did. Florida had lower risk-adjusted death rates from COVID than California did, even now, even after the recent summer surge in Florida in cases and deaths. Um, which is shocking, right? But it's true. Uh, you've also had more equal outcomes. So for instance, in California, it's the Hispanic population that has borne the, the brunt of COVID. A disproportionate number of deaths in COVID in California have come in the Hispanic population. In New York, it's the, it's the black population that had a disproportionate number of deaths from COVID, the working class people in, in each of these states. In Florida, there is no dis discordance between the deaths from COVID by race and the population representation. It's, COVID was an equal opportunity killer in Florida. There was less age-adjusted death rates in Florida, uh, whereas in the lockdown states, you had this incredibly unequal outcome by race and income, and also worse outcome in terms of deaths. Fascinating. I mean, it, it's, uh, you're basically saying that the Florida, because of its policies, had the more you know, equitable outcome, to, you, to use that term. So something that uh, has been talked about a lot, but I don't think is terribly well understood is this idea of herd immunity. I mean, it seems like with any virus that's circulating in the population, we'll get to herd immunity at some point. So, so but tell me about herd immunity with respect to COVID. Sure. So it's, it's actually not true that every virus will. Any virus that induces immunity at all, you, you recover from it and you're immune, will have herd immunity mm. at some point, right? So HIV, you don't get herd immunity. Um, uh, but COVID, if you're infected with it and recover from it, it, it produces immunity that is is actually quite durable. So the estimates are at one year, something like 0.3% of people are reinfected after they've recovered from COVID. Uh, okay, so uh, herd immunity is a very simple idea. It's that at, at, at time T right now, Every person that gets COVID infects one or fewer additional people. So if I get COVID, I only infect one person or, or fewer than one pe person on average. And that, what that means is that uh, the disease will decrease in prevalence, the decrease in incidence. So that the, 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 whenever the case counts are coming down, you're actually in herd immunity. Herd immunity is not a synonym for zero COVID. I think that is the problem that many people have had in thinking about herd immunity. It's not a synonym for the disease has gone away, we never have to think about it again. A, a, a society can go in and out of herd immunity. During high COVID season, the winter, and uh, you actually, a, a smaller fraction of the population, you start getting cases that are going up because the herd immunity threshold actually goes up. You need a larger fraction of the population actually immune in order for the cases to start coming down again. And, and vice versa, when, during low COVID season, you, uh, even a, a small fraction of the population immune means that the disease won't spread very much because you're above the herd immunity threshold very quickly. So what you have is a situation where um, when the disease first entered the population, no one was immune. And it spread very, very rapidly because every person that got it spread it to two, three other people, right? Um, and uh, the, 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 uh, uh, you can have variants that, that are more transmissible, uh, supposedly Delta is more transmissible, um, which make it so that uh, the, even when you have a certain fraction of the population immune, you get a new variant. Well, it can, it, because it's more transmissible, you need a larger fraction immune for the disease not to grow. Um, but what's happened over time is a larger and larger fraction of the population of different countries have become immune because, by dint of natural infection and recovery. And, and so uh, it will become more and more difficult for the disease to spread very rapidly and widely, to, to be an epidemic the same way it was in 2020.
Um, uh, actually, there's another sort of irony in this. Uh, the, the, the World Health Organization, um, when we wrote the Great Barrington Declaration, it changed the definition of herd immunity it, 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 on their website. They said that it's, it's immunity in a population, if I'm trying to get, to get exact, but that essentially it's, it's an immunity population created by vaccines. They erased the natural immunity part of the definition. After, after protest, they put it back. They said both vaccines and natural immunity can, can contribute to herd immunity. Ironically, the vaccines seem to protect against transmission for only a short time, or, and, and certainly incompletely. So that means the natural immunity is going to be the more important contributor to herd immunity when it happens. Now, let me just tell you what it'll look like. It won't look like the disease is gone. During high COVID season, the disease will return. During low COVID seasons, it'll go back, go back down again. Um, and uh, disease will continue to spread in the population over and over. People are likely to get COVID more than once in their lifetime, just like they're likely to get other colds more than once in their lifetime. Uh, the good news is that the second, third, fourth times you get it, your body remembers how to deal with it, and it's likely to be much milder than the first time you got it. So learning to live with COVID is not as scary as you might think. Uh, it's better the first time you get it to be protected with the vaccine because the vaccine blunts the worst of the disease, you know, th this death and, and uh, hospitalization. But um, I don't envision a future where you have to get boosters over and over and over again because such a large fraction of the population has already had it and therefore has pretty effective uh, protection against severe disease if they get reinfected.